In this video, I'm going to show you how you can share information from one course to another. Okay, first of all, I'd be remiss if I didn't give credit where credit is due. I want to give a big shout out to my buddy Steve, who's in Nevada. Steve originally gave me this idea, and I apologize to Steve for not acting on it for literally a few years. But I had a recent uh, situation, and this is how most of my videos get started, where a client was looking for me to store information in one course and then have the ability to recall that information in subsequent courses. And I'm going to be using a feature that's built into the web called local storage. Let me show you. Okay, so I've created two projects. They're virtually identical to one another, just a little bit of a difference between the JavaScript that I'm using between one and the other. So here is what could eventually become time management module one. And not much of it going on here. This is the title page when you click next. You arrive on this slide here where you enter your name. Now I've chosen a very specific variable. Normally when you create a text entry box, you get text entry box underscore one as the variable name. But uh, in this case here, I'm gonna use student name. And uh, then what we're gonna do is with our next button, we're gonna run a little advanced action. Nothing too crazy here. It just contains a little execute JavaScript, which I'll share with you here. Uh, what's happening here, and I'll just open up Microsoft uh, Visual Studio Code here so you can see this. Now, this is the first thing here. What we're doing is we're calling on local storage. We're setting an item that's called, in quotations here, underscore student underscore name and we're tapping into the Captivate API interface. That's what this is doing here. And we're getting the variable value from student underscore name, underscore student underscore name. And what we're doing is saving it in local storage. And I'll illustrate this for you in a little bit here. And that of course gets saved and it simply goes to the next slide. From here, of course, I can now use underscore student name throughout the course and personalize my e-learning and so forth. The problem with this, when, when you're not using the local storage, is that if you have, let's say, for example, a 10-module curriculum, you need to prompt the learner to type in their name every single time they launch a course. Well, in this case here, we can store it in local storage, which we've done in the first module. And in the second module, what happens here is on enter of the first slide, I'm running a slightly different uh, advanced action here. And in this case here, what we're doing is we're also executing JavaScript. And I'll just quickly show you what that code looks like. Here we've got, we're declaring a variable called underscore student underscore name. And we're using local storage, get item, and we're looking for that same variable name within local storage and therefore populating our captivate variable by the same name. So this will work fine here. And what will happen is um, on my next button here, what I'm doing is I'm doing a little advanced action to check if that variable is null. So underscore student name, if it's equal to null, in other words, there's nothing populated in that, I'm gonna jump to slide two, in which case the learner can then of course, you know, if they skipped module one, for example, they'll now be able to type in their name and it will also get stored to local storage. If local storage does contain something other than null, instead of jumping to slide two, it will jump to slide three, populate the variable, and allow them to continue with the rest of the course, just as if they typed it in the first time. So let's test this out first of all. I'm going to uh, preview module one, and we'll make sure that this works. So here's module one, we're moving forward here and I'm going to type in my name. Click the next button here, and uh, it says, great, Paul Wilson, you know, welcome to this course. 
Now you can verify that local storage is being used. In this case with Google Chrome, I'm gonna to go to more tools and open up developer tools. And specifically, we wanna look at application and local storage here. And you can see there is the key uh, or variable, if you will, underscore student equal, underscore name. And of course it equals Paul Wilson, which is great. So now let's go to module two, pretend like we completed module one, and we'll preview this in the same browser. Local storage is good too, because even if I close my browser and come back to it tomorrow, that information is still stored here. So let's open up our developer tools so we can see that just as we saw it the first time. There it is, so it, it's already in local storage. We'll start this course off and we'll go ahead and it automatically recognizes that Paul Wilson was stored in local storage and in the second module and therefore the third, the fourth and fifth and so on. I don't have to type in my name each and every single time I launch one of these courses. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.